Greetings and welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks. While most of you are preparing for those great holiday meals coming up, I've been quietly sitting in the background bringing in sports and fitness related watches and bracelets and bands in anticipation that by the time you guys get around to watching this, you're going to be into your New Year's resolutions. And we all know what that means losing weight, dropping those pounds. Well, I got an unboxing here today that is um, more than I expected, actually, and I expect a lot from these things. I usually don't do the bracelets and bands. I do the watches, but this is an exception. You're about to see why. Here it is. Pretty little thing. It's in gold. Let's bring it out. Take a look at it. Uh, pretty much plastic. It's like not really uh, one of those high-end watch kind of things. In fact, it looks like a good kick-around watch. You could just uh, toss it around, not have to worry much about it. It's got two little pins for charging, and it's got this little thing right there. And we all look at that and we say, Ugh, heart rate monitor. Mm, seen that before. Well, look carefully. This is not your normal heart rate monitor. This puppy can do heart... Um, Blood blood, blah, 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 blah. blood oxygen level content. This can actually read your systolic and diastolic blood pressure. Yeah, millennials, I know. What's blood pressure? Um, when you grow up, you'll find out. Anyway, I'm going to peel off the cover. I'm so sorry for insulting you guys. Really. Millennials take a bad rap these days because you guys have been categorized like baby boomers have. What in the world is a baby boomer when they're 80 years old? Doesn't sound like a baby anymore to me. But they're interested in this thing. You can bet. Watch. Okay, for all the baby boomers out there and blooming baby boomers, we open the box and we see that we have a charging thing. And that charging thing consists of a very unique, we've never seen it before, end for charging with a nice, strong magnet. Let's get that on here and... Ching, it latches in there great. So great that you can just like leave this on the table at night and just kind of throw your watch on it and it'll sync right up to it and charge. Why do I know this? Because I have been working with this thing for, gee, well over a week. We're about to see in the data. And I've got to tell you, I am super impressed. There are sports fitness bands that are really made for getting out there and doing those crunches, pull-ups, push-ups, breaststrokes, crawls, hiking, climbing, running, jogging, walking, bouncing, skipping rope, all that kind of stuff. In fact, we just reviewed one recently that does all of that stuff, but it doesn't do what this one does. This doesn't do anything that those do, but it does all that other stuff I'm talking about. So they're great complementary uh, instruments. And for any of you that are medically concerned and interested about the situation with your blood, this device or in similar ones might be a, a benefit because, let's turn this thing on, not only does it read your heart rate, your blood oxygen, and your blood pressure, but it can be set up to automatically do that every hour, quietly, in the background. You can take any of those measurements instantly, individually, and all of that data stays in this device and syncs up with the associated app called WearFit. Now I'm going to launch WearFit. We're going to get into this thing, and here's my data. Now it's loading, and you see it's bringing in all of the data from the last, since yesterday through today, and we're going to go through all this in a minute, but I wanted to see you doing the automatic sync that you don't even have to have the phone with you to accumulate that data. We'll get back to the app once we take a look at the watch. I'm going to put this on, show it to you, and use it, because I really want you to guys to see what this does. Okay. Oh, yeah. I got to tell you all about this and where you can get it, right? All right, I'll be right back. We have an awesome source, Banggood, from whom we all of a sudden are able to get these incredible devices that do blood pressure. Hardly anybody else carries them yet on the market. And I'm telling you, come 2017, 
People are going to want blood pressure, blood oxygen, and heart rate in their devices more than, in a sense, the useless heart rate thing that most of them come equipped with. Data you can actually work with. So this is called the CK11 Bluetooth 4.0, so it's going to be good low power when it does all of its stuff. Uh, blood pressure monitor wristband bracelet thing. And a very decent price um, and maybe even lower check the show notes for the buying link for this watch in black or gold and if we have any coupons for you we will of course have them there brought to you and me by banggood um, they rushed this thing out because i told them hey first of the year is coming people are going to want to lose weight and monitor uh, their physiology we got to get this up and get it out now before the first of the year what's it got in it What's it made of? What does it do? All of these things. Here's the list. It's got a six-axis sensor. It does vibration, and you can mute that if you want to. It's IP65 life waterproof, so you're not really going to take this swimming, but it will withstand some wetness here and there. A polymer lithium 100 milliamp battery, but because the display only comes on briefly, um, it's not going to use up too much time. In fact, it will last set, uh, standby for 15 days and seven days worth of normal use. And that's like recording every hour and uh, assessing your sleep rate and all that stuff. Um, it records seven days worth of motion and 23 total days of records in the watch. And we're talking some sophisticated, detailed records, stuff I think you're going to be impressed with. There's the rest of it. Oh, blacks silver i haven't seen it says it's in silver and gold we saw the black and gold uh listing so ah uh, the manual okay 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 don't want to skip the manual either it's in chinese and in english I just get so excited about this watch well this one seems to go down and over so let's let's look at it from this way it appears like that and here's the description of what it does system hardware Preparation before use, connection. There's the QR codes that you're going to want to scan to get the app. But I'm telling you, just go to the Google Play Store and download WearFit, W-E-A-R-F-I-T. Then you do the start using part. And we come back up here. Okay, the different function instructions. The blood pressure monitor. How it works. There's a lot of setup that you do in the app, and uh, it transfers over to the watch. Like if you want to set an alarm, you do it in the app, not in the watch. Your Q&A and your overall specifications. Okay, for the manual. Now, let's get to the app. Here's the app. Wow, where do I begin? Do you want to do the app or the watch? The watch? Okay, let's do the watch first, then we'll come back to the app. So you press the button once, and you get the time. And it also flips and shows you the time. And it also seems to be flipping out on the video. That's a synchronization issue going on between the camera and the watch. It does not squirrely like that. It's solid and steady. It's flickering because of some interface thing. They're not at the same frequency. So the first time you get the time and date as fed to you by your watch once you're synchronized, you press it once. It goes into the heart rate thing. Now what's cool about this is you don't even need to look at it when you know what it's doing. You... Press it once, and you know the time came on. You press it a second time, you know it goes to heart rate. And you go about doing whatever you're doing. In the meantime, in the background, it's tracking your steps. It's keeping track of that. But it's also getting you your heart rate. Now, unlike many of the other ones, it doesn't just grab the first thing and say, here's your heart rate, boom. No, watch it. It's monitoring and buffering. Yes, I had coffee again. I always do coffee before I do these. You know that. <laughs> I, I couldn't be this hyped up otherwise. So it's um, doing the heart rate and it's averaging all of this stuff. Now, when it's done, it will vibrate. And when I feel the vibration, I have about two to three seconds to look at it and know what my actual heart rate is averaged over several different measurements. And guess what, folks? It's accurate. There it goes. It's vibrating. Locked in at 91. And in a moment, it'll flip out and go. Okay? There's three different measurements you can take. And if you're on top of things, you can just go first one. And after it vibrates, touch it and go right to the second one. And then the third one after that vibration. 
and you'll get all three in the watch, and those all three can be transferred into the categories here in the app. But if you just want your heart rate for any reason, you got that right there. So the first push got, goes to there. The second push now goes to my uh, blood oxygen content level, whatever, in the, um, in the reading. It's using the same diode, same everything. In fact, it's all the same heart pulse that is being diagnosed. Ooh, shouldn't use that word. That is being measured to provide, we hope, accurate information. And from what I can tell so far, in comparing it with things like this, which is that, uh, it's just ticking away here, which is your, you know, your arm wrist thing, the high quality, high end blood pressure measuring device where it squeezes your arm and then releases. You know, you go to the doctor and the nurse takes your uh, measurements and she's using a stethoscope on your arm and in her ears while she's releasing pressure from something like this. And she's listening for your systolic and diastolic and boom, she hears a pulse and she reads a number and remembers it. There you go. It beeped. I'm at 97% blood oxygen. I press once more. Now I'm going to start taking my um, blood pressure. Talking about the traditional way is audio based. So if there's noises in the background, that could mask how easy it is to hear the subtleties of the pulsing of the blood through the arteries as the stethoscope is being used, whether it's a, a wired stethoscope like this in an electronic instrument or whether it's a human being doing it, it's, it's hit and miss. I mean, it depends on how fast the air is going out versus how soft the sound is versus the quality of the person's ability to test it. You do it three times, you get five different answers. This is different. The measurement that it's getting is coming from monitoring the wave of your blood pulsing through the capillaries in your skin being detected by those diodes. The same ones that get the heart beat, think of it this way. If you're out and you hear a car go by, there you go, it just beeped. That's my readings. You hear a car go by and it's uh, playing disco and you can't hear the song, but you can hear boom, 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 boom. Boom. That's how these traditional watches give you your heart rate. But there's so much more to the music than that. There's so much more to the heartbeat than that. And this band, this bracelet, this little thing for 30 bucks is picking all that stuff up. And it's the software that's in this and in here when it transfers over that lets you actually analyze that waveform and come up with an average, you saw it was averaging it over time and getting you accurate information, repeatable, accurate blood pressure information. This is a first, and this is commercially available. Now, nothing replaces your doctor and his stethoscope. So if you've got concerns, visit your doctor, have them do your blood pressure, let him know about this. Let him take his blood pressure his way and compare it with what this does on your arm and see... Uh, See if they're convinced, if you're convinced that it matches. You could use electronic instruments like this or the ones you can pick up at the drugstore. Even the wrist cuff kind, which they say aren't even accurate at all, that supposedly still squeezes down and reads your blood pressure in the traditional way. This, uh, I can't say enough, this is really impressive. So what are we looking at? We're looking at a variety of categories. We have steps. It says I've currently walked 678 steps today. And when I go in here, it shows my um, target completion. I think I set 6,000 steps or something. So I haven't walked much today. It shows the distance traveled and the calories burned. That's typical traditional. And it's showing when I did it. So I strapped this thing on at, what, about 8? This morning, six. That's six, seven, eight. This is every hour. This is the reading of, uh, look at that. It's, it's, it's trying to take the pulse. Now, this is another little drawback for you. I got to tell you, when it's not on, it will come up with a number. Typically, it doesn't flash and say error, which it should, because it's coming up with the wrong information. And you'll see that is also transferred over here in the chart. If it would give me error and give me zero for a reading and it wouldn't show up, that would be the best. And it's an enhancement they need. But as far as the accuracy of real measurements, it's doing good. This is today. If I go to the weekly display, you can see 
what my walking was like this week. And all of the information here averaged over the week. And here you go over the month. So obviously I just got it. I played with it a lot when I first got it. And this is my data. So I'm averaging 723. This is embarrassing. <laughs> It's not me, really. A friend of my, a friend of mine wore this watch and he only walks 723 steps a day. Well, this is averaged over the month. So we're getting zero for all of these. So give me a month and I'll pump that number up. Give me a week and I'll pump that number up. Give me the rest of today and I'll get out and get exercise, I promise. That's the step gauge. This is your sleep monitoring, of which I don't wear it to bed. And I haven't, and so this is erroneous data. I yeah, have not worn it, and it's giving me these, uh, these erroneous readings. So I just have to ignore it on the daily, or the weekly, or the monthly. Um, how it's registering that, I presume, is from that six-axis sensor and not from the laser diodes, typical to the sleep monitoring apps that you find in most of the uh, traditional watches. But it has that feature if you want to wear this all the time. Now we get into the juicy stuff. Here's the heart rates, okay? The last heart rate we did, 95, taken. It says, oh, you know what? We need to synchronize this. Let's go back here and load up the latest measurements. Because I think the latest measurement was, what, at 11 o'clock? And didn't we just do one just now? We did one at 11.39, came up with a 99. See, I just synchronized it. There you go. Here's the hourlies. I was wearing it this morning, 95. I was much more relaxed at 10, 9. And then that's when I put the watch on. Uh, here at 11, uh, 2200, it got an erroneous 103. And here we go. At, this one's a real one at 2039. I wore it. And... At 2,200, 20, uh, 1,900. These are the hourly ones. This is an actual measurement. So all this stuff is, is in here. Now, yesterday, here we go. You see this little range. <laughs> uh, I don't always sit here and play with watches. Uh, once in a while, I drive around, and I found out by accident <clears throat> that my battery was draining in the car because the alternator is not working. And anyway, long story short, I had to go and walk to the, uh, the the shop where I could buy a new battery, and I had to carry that battery back. And I figured I got the watch on. I'm going to check it out. So look at this. Here's my normal heart rates, and then I started this stuff. Twelve thirty, twelve thirty three. Look at the beats per minute. So I'm getting, you know, real data. It's not one of those bogus things where it's always giving you a certain number around 80 or 90. It's giving me legitimate numbers when I was doing some light exercise here in this range yesterday in uh, Pulse. Let's monitor that as we go to the other things. In addition to, did I finish the uh, display here? That's that. And then you've got your daily and yesterday, can I go back to yesterday? I don't think so, but I can go to the weekly. This is today, that's yesterday, Monday, Sunday. So this is the average maximum and minimum heart rate over those days for the week. This is the weekly average. This is the daily. This is for the month. And of course, it's going to be really, you know, it, I need to have more data to get the true accuracy over time. And then there's the individual one, of course, like that. I can take a single measurement or go into real-time measurement right here as well. That's another feature. Okay, let's do the blood pressure next. This is the amazing one that you don't find on watches. And this was the last one that we did at 1141 right now, 124 over 85. At 11 is 125 over 87. I haven't changed much. Earlier in the day, I wasn't as active. I'm talking and doing these videos, getting set up for it. So, you know, it was a little lower. Nine o'clock, it was this and so forth. Now, we go back to yesterday. Now, see these all the same? This is when the watch was off my arm. That should be zero. It shouldn't know, you know, somehow it should know that it's not on skin. If it doesn't pick anything up, it shouldn't be giving me anything. But it is. And that's a little glitch that needs to be fixed. But here we go back to yesterday. And these are the readings I'm getting. 
and we get back into when I was out there pumping pumping iron, so to speak, <laughs> if you want to call a lead acid battery iron, and uh, my blood pressure rating readings were also going up along with my pulse rate. So I can see what my blood pressure looks like under stress. Interesting, huh? I got daily. You'd see the two different graphs. It's a dark red and a light red. Weekly. There's my weekly systolic and diastolic. Averaging 131 over 86, it says, with a high of 164 over 100 and a low of 105 over 71. And it says borderline hypertension at this uh, situation. They want you always to be taking your blood pressure relaxed, you know, when they tell you to what's your, your baseline blood pressure. They want you relaxed. And if you are, then you're going to have good relaxed results. And if your relaxed results are hypertensive or even higher, then you've got issues, go see your doctor. Don't self-medicate. Don't mess with your meds to try to make it change. Talk to your doctor, okay? This is just for your information and hopefully your doctors if uh, if they, they want to see this kind of long-term, real-time. Real-time. You can do real-time blood pressure measurement as well as take a singer measurement. Now, I mean... For sure. You're in the app. As long as it's tethered, you press that button. If this is on your arm, it doesn't even turn on the display. Oh, by the way, you see it does turn on if you just tilt your arm to see the time. But it doesn't turn on the display to do the readings. It does it completely in the background, invisible to you. It does that every hour, and it does it single. And if you turn it on real time, it will do it continuously that you'll be able to monitor on here. Same thing for your blood oxygen level. And here you go. There's your results. They're usually high, like 97 to 99, unless you're under stress. And then I'm down to 88. That's at 16, 15. Where are we? Okay. Well, I'm running. 88 was kind of low right there. That's at 3 in the morning. That's at midnight. I'm guessing this is erroneous data coming in as well. So the blood oxygen level is tracking pretty good. Here's the zone yesterday, I think, when I was working out. And you see it's dropped down a little bit. And again, same thing. You can get your daily blood oxygen over those days, your weekly, and your monthly. All right. Blood oxygen. And then the final thing they give you is your fatigue rating. Now, I don't know how they come up with this, but I'm in good condition overall, basically. I had mild fatigue at these times when I didn't have the watch on. I guess I was stressing that I wasn't wearing the watch, right? And that goes back into good condition, mild fatigue. Um, yeah, got to play with that to get a better feel for it. But again, you can get your daily, your weekly and your monthly averages on that as well. And it says mild fatigue is my long-term average so far. Okay. Wow. We covered a lot here. That's all of this kind of stuff. Now, to tell you and show you how this is even more accurate um, than um, we normally would figure, you can go in here into something like settings and... Oh, here's where you can empty the data from the watch. You can put in your personal information, your gender, your age, your height in centimeters or feet, your weight, uh, whether you wear it on the left hand or right hand, how you want your data accumulated. Uh, this is where you set your baseline reference value for your systolic and diastolic. So what they want you to do is something like your cuff, or with the help of your doctor or nurse to get your best accurate blood pressure reading you can at the moment and enter that in here. Are you typically, or at that time, 125 over 80? Great. Put that in. Put this on. Do your reading. And it calibrates to that baseline what the measurement is. You see, we're all different. And so this is going to kind of calculate the deviation from your normal to report whether you're high or low compared with what the baseline is when you set it up. 
that's the way to do it because we're all different. You need to establish what your baseline is. You can put in your health goals, how many steps you want to walk. Again, this is only doing steps. It's not doing fancy workout kind of stuff. You need a, a real sports fitness watch for that. This is more for getting blood-related data and light step exercise information. Uh, that's the user information. I think we covered all of it. Yeah, okay. And uh, the save button up there saves it to the device. Your health weekly uh, shows your last week step gauge and some healthy tips. Your sleep last week. Your heart rate last week. Your blood pressure last week. You see, I'm starting to accumulate some data. Blood oxygen and then the fatigue level, and healthy tips about each of those. So as you wear this, it gets more and more data. Shake to photograph is kind of interesting. It puts the camera mode on your phone, and from your watch, I can point up here, shake the watch. Oh, I'm shaking it. You don't see that. And it, there, you heard the click? It just took that picture. So it automatically put this in that camera mode, so if you want to take a selfie, have somebody else hold the phone and point it at you or prop it up, you have that ability to take that picture or take the picture directly from the button, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Or shake it. And it'll take the picture. Better if I have it actually on the arm, I guess. Anyway. Well, you get the drift. It works. That's the shake to photograph. Run. Here is fun. This is where, okay, it's not getting my GPS. If I have GPS uh, set up, it's going to put the map on the screen. And I'm going to be able to say start, and it'll begin in go with doing my run. And it's tracking all that information now on the device. Long press to pause. And you can either complete it or keep going. And it's showing you your kilometers, it's tracking your steps, and it's timing it. So you've got all that information. Okay? Now I guess it's bringing in the GPS data. Anyway, that's something that's pretty unique to this. It's showing the GPS stuff right here. It's using Scott Map, or you can use Google Maps as uh, the, the background. The device management brings you into here, which is where you can really set this device up the way you want. Um, the connection management is just basically where you uh, tether the device to the app. And you can just link it and you're there. You can find the bracelet, pretty much like finding the watch. It's now vibrating and lights up with the time. Not going to be easy to find by making noise because all it does is vibrate. You have intelligent reminders that you can have the watch vibrate when you get a call or SMS or any of these things. Pod o'clock. That's the first time I've heard an alarm clock called a pod o'clock. But this is where you can set an alarm and it will ring once or every day or whatever you want. And it vibrates and it's just a basic alarm. The sedentary reminders where you can set a recurring sedentary reminder and set the start and end times for that. Again, it just vibrates. The apps that you can turn on that will vibrate when you get a notification. You don't read it on your watch, but it tells you that something came in so you can pull out your phone. Okay. And do not disturb times, which is nice that you can set it so your watch isn't going off while you're sleeping. All that is in the Intelligent Remind. You can uh, set it to raise your arm to see the time. And here's where you set it to take measurements on every hour on the hour. All right? Now, here's our, some more stuff I really love about it. Uh, okay, that was device management. I get to that. Okay, let's, let's do the settings and then we'll, we'll finish up. You saw the personal information area. We went over that. That's automatically right there as well. And the settings of the health goals we did. Empty the data is where you can clear it all out and start over again. It has WeChat support. And look at this, Google Fit support. You can go in here and transfer the data, I presume, to WeChat. I don't use that. Or to Google Fit. I'm trying to use that. 
And that's nice. Usually the data is pretty much locked to the app that you've got and the device that you've got. But if you can move this data to Google Fit, that is sweet. Um, I'm not sure how much, if it's just the step information, if it includes heart rate, or you get everything. But that's a good start. I'd love to see an email thing so that you could email your entire history, for example, out. Um, that would be very, very valuable. But again, it's brand new, so there may be incremental upgrades or brand new watches coming out. The About tells you that we are currently using that version. And then there's Help, and you can check the version on the device itself. And it says it's the latest version. So it is able to update the firmware on the fly if anything comes in. Now I'm going to strap it back on and show you one more thing that I, I love about this. Remember I was telling you, if you're out and about, and you want to take your measurements, and you know how it works. You just press the button twice, first to turn it on and see the time, and then once more, and you'll see your heart rate. And you just wait until you feel the vibration. You press it once more, you get the blood oxygen, and then you press it once more after the vibration, and you get your blood pressure. Well, there's an easier way if you have your phone with you. Just pick the phone up out of your pocket, go in to measure, and see this thing says one key measure, I tap that, and as long as they're synced together, and the watch turned on because I turned my arm, but it does not turn the light on uh, on the watch. It's just sitting there on its own. Um, but it's the diodes are working. You see the green diodes? They're working. And so, and this is another cool thing. This really works. I can be walking, and I don't have to hold perfectly still like you do in the doctor's office and with most other devices. You can actually be moving around with this thing, and it's going through, and simultaneously, it's, it's calculating the heart rate, the blood pressure, the blood oxygen, and your fatigue rate. And when the little circle stops going around, boom, it flashes the results up here for you. It adds them to each of the categories that were here. It places them in those charts, so you have it as part of your daily, weekly, and yearly records, and it was done just by pushing one button. That is sweet. So for a device that, in addition to measuring your blood pressure, which is really unique, and accurately getting your heart rate averaged over several readings, and now giving you blood oxygen, and telling you your, your overall fatigue condition on a specific date and time. I'm running out of oxygen. I'm talking too much. <laughs> this particular CK11 little strap bracelet thing is amazing. It really is amazing. We are ushering in a brand new way of doing measurements of these kinds. This is not approved, as far as I know, by any medical professionals because that takes a long, long time. We're still locked into the old strapping arm routine. And I have put this on because um, this is interface. I think I showed you this in another video. I'll have a link to that video as well down here where you can look at this and another representative watch that does blood pressure. This thing... As beautiful and fun as it is, is like plus or minus 10, you know, on the systolic and diastolic. It's roughly 170 to 190 over 50 to 75, you know. Uh, does that tell me anything? Not really. But as you saw in the app, the measurements that I'm getting from this device are usually plus or minus 3 to 5. It's very highly accurate on the blood pressure readings that I've seen. And the pulse rate readings seem very accurate as well. But as it goes for now, it's just a toy. It's just for entertainment purposes only. So if you buy this, it does not replace a visit to the doctor, your regular blood pressure, your physical exam, or anything, okay? Use it as a supplementation for information and entertainment purposes only. There. We're clear on that, right? Okay. You can get it from Banggood. You can check the show notes down below. There'll be a link to pick it up. And I highly recommend it. I think it's a really nice thing to have. You can toss this on your right arm and toss a really good one like uh, the Lympho one that we just reviewed on your left arm, the EO8. And uh, go out and do your jogs and all that other kind of stuff and collect your actual data on that one and all of your metrics, uh, biometrics on this one. Or put them on the same arm. What the heck? Anyway, figure it out. 
It is coming up on New Year's. We are all going to be doing our New Year's resolution. You know that already. You know you're going to be eating. It's going to order it now, and you'll have it here in time for early January before you break your resolutions. At least you can get your data down for baseline. That's how you were at the beginning of 2017. You've been watching Smartwatch Ticks. I appreciate your subscription. We all do. And your questions and comments uh, down below, whatever comes up. Um, We'll see you again soon, and there's a lot more to come. We are just beginning, folks. Honestly, we're just beginning with this type of technology.